Hey everybody, it's Jeremy from Budget Dad and Brewing. Let's make some tapache. So for this drink, you're gonna need a few basic ingredients. The first one is cinnamon sticks. These can be purchased at almost any grocery store. Uh, if you can't, go ahead and go on Amazon and look for cinnamon sticks, or in Spanish is canela. You're also gonna be looking for Mexican brown sugar. This is piloncillo. These are the large ones. I've seen ones that are even larger. These are the largest that we can find. In most places in America, you can find a Mexican grocery store, uh, Mercado. I would recommend doing it. I've seen recipes where they use brown sugar. I talked to my mother-in-law and she said, Jeremias, do not use brown sugar. Make the extra trip. If you don't have any Mercados nearby, I recommend going to the Amazon link. I'll see if I could search around and try to find a link and I'll go ahead and post it here. The pineapple, again, Pretty typical. This recipe is a one gallon recipe. It calls for one pineapple, but these are kind of tiny pineapples. So I went ahead and got another one back there and I'm gonna be using the skin and you know, so what? So I've got extra extra pineapple that we get to eat later on. I'm gonna use raisins. Some consider this as a yeast nutrient, so it'll help our yeast. I just have a big, huge earthenware Korean fermentation pot that I got from the Korean grocery store a few months back. I've made rice wine with this. It turned out really, really well. I think this is just a cool, you could probably make sauerkraut in this thing. It's huge. Uh, but as you can see, nice and clean, earthenware. I went ahead and used this Fleischmann's Active Dry Yeast a few days ago for my pizza dough. And I've got about a quarter of a teaspoon left in here, maybe up to a half. I'm gonna throw that in um, proof it, make sure that it's alive, and I'm gonna be pouring that in as well. Lots of people are gonna say this is just absolutely a horrible idea. It might be. <laughs> so, but uh, you're gonna see if, if we foul this up, or if I foul this up today, you're gonna be the first one to know about it. So we're starting out with one gallon of water, plus I put a few table, two tablespoons, uh, just to make up for any evaporation. I'm gonna heat this water up. This is not a necessary step, but I did it and I'll tell you why. Number one is just to make myself feel better that we are 100% uh, free of bugs. And then number two, I'm gonna be taking the piloncillos and I'm gonna be dissolving those into this water. I don't wanna cook it, which is why I'm not gonna, again, boil this. I just wanna get the water boiled and then cool down uh, to a warm enough temp to where the sugar is going to dissolve. Let's go ahead and do that now. get this yeast started. All right, so this has been sitting for about 35 minutes or so. There's one little tiny speck in here, but for the most part, all five of these piloncillos have dissolved properly. I decided to stick with five for right now. They're medium size. They're not the large, the size that are really the size of your hand, and they're not the small candy size. Again, don't use the small size, according to my mother-in-law. Use the medium or the larger size. The smaller ones are intended to be more like a candy. So now that this is dissolved, let's go ahead and check what the specific gravity is. I went ahead and sterilized with uh, one step my turkey baster and my hydrometer. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. All right, so we've got that filled up. Let's give it a spin. We are at about 1.06, which I think is perfect. It's right there at the end of beer and um, before the table wine mark. I would rather have this a lower, uh, lower ABV and have some sugars still sitting there, those residual sugars, because this is intended to be a sweet drink to my understanding. But again, I've heard some people saying they want it 2%. Uh, if, yeah, I mean, that's soda. You know, I could just add some vodka to my fruit punch if I want. So <laughs> this, this I want to be a little bit higher, but not a ton. Around that, that beer sort of ABV, I think would be pretty cool. Some videos are gonna tell you to use the rind. Some are gonna tell you to cut a ton of it. Some even say to use the, um, the actual like meat, a ton of meat of the pineapple. I talked to my mother-in-law and I trust her. And she said, Jeremy, you gotta make sure that there is meat along with the rind. Not a ton, but at least some, because otherwise it's gonna lack sweetness. So Delia, I'm gonna take your word on this. Let's see, critique me. Wait, first I need to cut this, don't I? Right 
Another important step is putting the core into this mix as well. So I'm going to cut off the and we are going to use that for something else. Really exciting. Kind of one of my favorite fruits. Anyone say? We are all finished with our prep work. We've got our two pineapples cut up. We've got the skins here, the rinds. Uh, we've got the cores. We've got three cinnamon sticks that I'm going to use. We've got a handful of raisins. And at the last moment, I saw a lemon in the fridge and I decided to peel off just a little bit more. This is not going to be the most authentic recipe in the world. I'm using yeast. I'm using lemon. I'm using raisins. I was going to use tamarind. Um, but it is what it is. Let's start off. First, I'm going to add a little bit of this and I think what I'm going to do is layer it. So I've added just a little bit of the sugar water. I'm going to add a little bit of yeast. I want some at the bottom and I want some in the middle and I want some at the top. I'm going to stir it anyway but I just feel better about it. And I'm going to layer these pineapples. Oh, I forgot the raisins. Good. And a couple pieces of core. And cinnamon stick. And a little bit more sugar water. And the rest of these rinds. And the raisins. And cinnamon stick. And a lemon peel. Okay, and the rest of the sugar water. I'm going to give this a mix very gently. Just going to make sure this is all submerged. Let's take a look. Oh, that looks good. Okay. So it's about 9.30 p.m. I just got off the phone with my mother-in-law, and she asked for an update about the uh, tapache and how much... Uh, sugar and you know all, all the stuff that I put into it. One thing that she said was really interesting and she said no no Heramias it's not three days which all the videos and stuff tell you it's two weeks and so I t that, that changes everything uh, because I was thinking that this was going to be sort of a really low alcohol uh, type of a scenario uh, you know three percent I wanted it to be a little bit higher than that. So the two weeks makes a lot more sense to me. Anyhow, I was a little nervous using Fleischmann's yeast after three days, and I thought it would be this huge yeast bomb. And so now at least I know that with two weeks, it's going to be able to work through the process. The yeast will fall and settle. I'm really curious to see how this goes. I'll keep you updated as much as possible. I'm, I'm stoked about this. Um, we'll see you guys soon. <laughs> We're back. It has been two weeks, and that is the time that this vessel, fermentation vessel, has been downstairs in the basement. Um, you know, again, with uh, the YouTube videos that I've watched previously, they say with uh, tepaches to keep it for two, three days. But my mother-in-law said, no, 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 Jeremias, you've got to keep it in for two weeks in this vessel before you filter it out. So just to watch me through the process, because I've never done this and I don't trust myself, I went ahead and invited my mother-in-law, mi suegra, Delia. Say hi, Hello. everyone. Hello. She's... I can't wait to see this. <laughs> so she will be my, uh, my, my best critic here. So we'll see how it goes. Well, it smells, it smells beautiful. So uh, let's go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on top of a stool that I have here on the counter. And then we're going to siphon that down and we're going to let gravity, um, we're going to let gravity take its course. Okay. You ready, you guys? We're going to pinch this off. We're going to put it into our graduated cylinder. Okay. So we can take a reading, see what the alcohol content is going to be. Oh. Let's get a tablespoon or something and taste it. And see what you think of the tepache. Mmm. Oh. It's nice. Oh. It's nice. It's, uh, even though it's not on ice yet, it's lightly alcoholic. It tastes almost like a pineapple wine. 
like a yeah, it's really nice. And it's just you need the you just need the, the skin, you know, a few pieces of the the pineapple, but it's amazing. Yeah. I could really taste the pineapple in here. It's it tastes like fresh, fresh pineapple. Oh wow. And it's and it's uh it's whew, I could actually feel a a burning sensation down my like throat a little bit now, so it has some it has some heat on it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people think that it's a cheap thing, but I think it's a very natural, organic, homemade, <clears throat> you know, a uh, uh, refreshment drink mm -hmm. for the summer, for the winter. You know, you can even have it hot and you know, like a tea in in the winter. Ah, true. Let's take a look at so inside. He thinks that it's, it's delicious. He said, "Look, it's just it's just like a pineapple juice, the color and everything." It's not exactly how it should be. We are at about 95% siphoned. There's a little bit left at the bottom. I could filter that out later. It smells like fresh fruit, pineapples. I even put raisins in there and I could I could almost smell a little raisin on the back end, but maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Okay, let's get a hydrometer reading. This is almost a 0.99. So this oh, is, wow. uh, yeah, so this is pretty hot. I'm not sure exactly what the, uh, what the alcohol content is, but I'll do the calculation from the original specific gravity, and then we will get uh, that posted in the video. But let's try it, and then I'll tell you what it tastes like. My mother-in-law says we should use ice. Is that right? All right. Okay. I'm just, since I already have this in the graduated cylinder, let's pour this in. Mm. Is that, how's that look, Mom? Nice. Hey, let's give it a try. Salud. Salud. Con tepache. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's not very sweet, but it's almost because I'm. I'm smelling. I'm getting so much pineapple in this that yeah. I think it's tricking my brain into thinking that. Um, that I'm tasting sweetness, but I'm not. It's super clean and yeah. and refreshing. But this is really nice. Let me try I this love, again. I, I love it. It's a very refreshing drink with a little bit of, a, of alcohol, you know? <laughs> wow. But so now you know, don't throw your pineapple skin ever again. Agreed. You hear that, everybody? Don't, pi <laughs> don't throw your pineapple skins away ever again. There's nothing harsh about this at all. Just one more drink. Mmm. I don't know. I don't know, Ma. What do you think? Should we yeah. should we ferment this out more down yeah, in the basement? You, you know, you can drink if you want. You know, you can have plenty there and then taste it. You know, test it and see if you can get a little bit more, you know, alcohol. If, if you can just wait it one, one more week, you know, with one bottle and then, you know, see the difference. Okay. That's a good, uh, good suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Both ways is going to be amazing, you know, delicious. Okay. I think that's a great uh, that's a great idea for another video. Yeah, who knows? Because I never have drinking for more than you know the two weeks. Have you ever stopped at two or three days, like the like the YouTube videos say, or do you always no. let it go to the two weeks? Two weeks. Two yeah. weeks. I never take the you know omega before you know two weeks. Well, thanks, Mom, for all of the advice. Well, so my pleasure, honey. I'm, I'm glad it, it turned out great. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. Talk to you soon. We'll make it. We'll make it when you come down next or come up. It's a promise, okay? Cool. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, YouTube. You heard it here first. Mi suegra Delia said, as far as tapache goes, two weeks is the key. And I have to say, I think she's on point. Two weeks is perfect. This is a beautiful drink, a summertime drink. And although it's wintertime right now, I'm happy to drink this. Maybe even heat it up with a little cinnamon stick make a tea out of it. We might go ahead and do another video later on down the line. I'm gonna take a half of this batch, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator because it's ready to drink, and I'm gonna take the other half and I'm gonna continue to let it age downstairs. It might still ferment out, but we're at 0.99, and being the amateur I am, I think that this is fermented out fully, but let's put some more age on it, we'll see how it goes. We'll see you then next time.
Make sure if you like this, like, subscribe, questions, comments, put them down there. If you don't, that's okay too. I'm not going to judge you. Take care.